The Kamehameha wave and the Galaga clashing like titans. I have a theory that's what caused Beyblade to be in existence because that's all Beyblade is. No one ever comes to these type of videos expecting the most, you know, high level. So I'm just gonna tell you this now. Expect high level from me because I do not come here with some common ass trash ass knowledge. I come here with the facts. And that is why I'm here to point out a lot, a lot of these moments that are basically Dragon Ball moments. And of course, the big one that everyone's gonna, you know, point out and say like, oh, that's obviously Dragon Ball, is the aura. Whenever they're powering up, they're screaming, saying, yeah! Then you see the little aura around them, and also their bay is like lighting up like a firework. Another one, Jinga, is basically Goku. This is obvious. One started the G, the other one started the G. One has Ka in it, the other one has Ku in it. So technically speaking, you know, the resemblance is obviously very canon. And of course, one has a blue giant beam. And the other one also has a blue giant beam that is their Pegasus Beyblade shooting. Because Beyblade has given us a Kamehameha, and we just never knew. Jinga, using the Star Booster, attack for the first time gave us our first interpretation of what will look like if a kamehameha was released in the beyblade world and if that wasn't enough to convince you that jinga is goku we cut to the last episode where nemesis the god of destruction which i sadly can't say that the god of destruction of nemesis is also you know beerus because beerus came out a little bit after nemesis which kind of sadly no but we still cut to nemesis the god of destruction versus jinga our local hero and jinga in order to win had to absorb the powers of everyone to start from it everyone in the world now of course you could say just the power of friendship oh it can't be a spirit bomb obviously our right, answer me this when everyone is there raising their bays in the air what comes out a blue light just like the spirit bomb the blue light rushes to the source jinga's bay pegasus absorbs the power using it to destroy nemesis now you're believing me with jinga being goku it's obvious to say that now i need to make some similarities with some other characters starting with Kiyoya, the rival of Jinga after Jinga humiliated him, beat him in front of his own friends. Kiyoya dedicated his life to beating Jinga, and hence they became rivals. Kiyoya even went so far to fight Ryuga in Metal Fusion. Though Ryuga did ultimately win, that fight still had one of my favorite special move clashes of all time. And of course, the two moves I'm talking about is King Lion Furious Black Shot Dark Move. Dragon Emperor, soaring destruction. Both moves really looking cool, coming down to final clash, causing the big explosion in the arena. And honestly, I was giddy when I was a kid. I was like, yay, Kyo, yeah. And the next thing you know, I saw Kyo get stabbed. And then who do you see in the back? You see the other crew. Because you see Benke, who's basically Nappa 2.0, if Nappa and Vegeta actually kind of got along to an extent. But who else in the group can we assume to be a Dragon Ball character? Well, you can't have a group without the mechanic, the one who makes the bullshit out. If a bay is broken and we can't use it anymore, who do we call? Madoka. And same in Dragon Ball. If there's a problem that needs to be fixed that has to be fixed with technology, who do we call? Boom. Both of them, obviously, you can see the similarities there. So this one is going to be the stretchiest of the stretchiest because Masamune Kadoya being Piccolo. Now, hear me up. Piccolo is green. Masamune, where's green? Oh, Striker is green. Piccolo again is green. Masamune, in the beginning of Metal Masters, already wanted to destroy Jinga's legacy by beating him and being the number one blader. After Masamune successfully beat Jinga, then they team up to beat a greater foe. Now tell me if these names sound familiar. Special Beam Cannon, Lightning Sword Flash. Between the two moves, what do they have in common? They usually aim not to destroy a big giant field, but to pierce that point to be the indestructible lance. And now the final member of the group that's kind of a little bit, you know, people know, but people don't really know. Kenta. I believe Kenta is also a character from Dragon Ball. Kenta's story is very simple. In the beginning, he was weak. In the beginning, he was a bitch. And then, next thing you know, he grew up a little bit more and more, you know, and he got more powerful. Next thing you know, Metal Masters, he got steamrolled. Basically, no one cared about him. And then we go to Metal Fury, where we see Kenta go through the hardest journey he's ever went through by trying to keep up with Ryuga, of all people. Kenta was there on ground zero, where Nemesis was battling against every body with a star fragment. Of course, nothing could be done. Ryuga was down for the counts. So Kenta, trying to be brave, tried to face Nemesis, the god of destruction. Of course, Kenta got absolutely obliterated. There is no hero story here where he just, you know, all of a sudden gets a power up. Oh wait, we are in a hero story because it's a kid show also, where Ryuka appears up, remembers that Kenta and him had a promise, and he fulfilled his deal. By Ryuga giving up the star fragment, giving up his essence to Kenta. Giving him the power up of a god!
which made him the strongest one there. He's the only one that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nemesis, even though it's for a, like a brief moment. And of course, after hearing all of that, the obvious answer to who I'm comparing him to is Gohan. Start in the beginning of the series as a bitch. Next thing you know, little by little, arc by arc, you could say, in the Saiyan Saga, trying his best, but not strong enough. Frieza Saga. Again, trying his best, but basically got steamrolled once Frieza went final form. Then we get the Cell Saga. Where his mentor, his father, Goku, trained his son, giving him the boost he needed, saying that I believe. But both of them came from the gutters and risen to heroes. And if this isn't convince you that Beyblade is Dragon Ball, I don't know what will. But until then, thank you for watching, and you guys stay safe and peace.